Welcome to Mental Health Mondays today. I am Carrie Biscolonis with Reset Brain and Body. Okay, so today we are talking about how to reset when you are a full-time mom, full-time working mom, full-time anything where time is limited. So I know that sometimes the word and the phrase self-care is overused and overwhelming, especially when you feel like you don't even have enough time to shower. So I'm here to help you with four different ways in which we can start to look at how to integrate a reset into your daily life. So the first thing I want to just offer you is permission to take care of yourself. So often as moms, we've been told that our needs fall down to the bottom of the priority list. And that's simply not true. I know for me, I found that in order for me to take care of everyone else, either my kids, my husband, the house, my clients, my business, is that I have to take care of me. I am not a good human if I don't take care of myself first. And for me, it starts first thing in the morning. I know that my energy level is so disrupted if I am woken up by a child that needs me. I would rather wake up on my own terms. So yes, it means I wake up really early, but it also means that I have carved out time, especially for me, even on the days that it's maybe eight minutes because my three-year-old decides to wake up at the crack of dawn or earlier these days with daylight savings. So giving yourself permission to take care of yourself means that you set priorities and say, okay, I know I have to take care of me. And it could be as simple as, I'm gonna get out of bed and I'm gonna brush my teeth before I go downstairs. Or I'm going to scroll on my phone for 10 minutes because I want to. Either way, just something, anything that feels like I've filled my cup before I'm just outpouring to everyone else. And those of you with babies that are on erratic schedules, this might be controversial, so I apologize in advance if this is controversial for you, but get your baby to sleep. And I know some babies are really hard, and I understand that it's really hard to hear them crying, but honestly, if you can get them to sleep, and honestly, after four months, you can start sleep training, and it's gonna be okay. I work in psychology, they are gonna be okay. You don't have to worry about attachment issues if you make your kids cry it out for a little bit, because the health and the mental peace that you get back with more sleep is fundamental to your ability to take care of yourself and take care of those babies. Okay, so offering yourself permission, knowing that you deserve the care that you give to everyone else and truly knowing this. And if you're someone who is a nurturer and you are a giver and you love taking care of everyone else, start practicing some self-awareness in that, right? Is that a trend where you give yourself away and you don't have anything left for you, just start noticing it because guaranteed it's probably been a behavior that you've had your whole life and at some point it doesn't work for you. Self-care is not selfish. Just remember that self-care is not selfish. So again, we start out with this offer permission. Offer yourself permission. The next item when you're looking to create a reset for yourself is stop comparing Oh, oh my gosh, you go on Instagram, it's like, this mom's doing this, and this one's doing this, and oh my gosh, I don't know how to do crafts. I remember when my son, I think he was like 18 months, maybe, like old, old enough, where I looked around and I said, oh my gosh, I don't have crayons, or paper, or markers, or paint. I had nothing, I had nothing creative for crafts. I'm just not a crafty person, it's not my thing. And I realized, again, 18 months, huh, maybe I should have something for him to draw with. Stop comparing, right? For me, my son and I bonded in different ways. Crafting wasn't our thing. It wasn't until I had that pressure of, oh, this is what I should do, that then I felt a lot of shame. And so recognize as you're scrolling, as you're talking to other moms, are you comparing and is that causing shame? You need to trust yourself and your instincts and what your kids need. Maybe your kids need quiet time. Maybe they need more time indoors versus outside, 
or maybe they need to be outside and getting muddy and it doesn't matter. Maybe they need to be in preschool. Maybe they don't need to be in preschool. Maybe they need to have playdates and maybe they don't. Maybe they need a vacation and maybe they don't. You know what's best for them, but it's really hard to trust your instincts when you are filtering in so much information. It's diluting your own sense of self. So try to stop comparing and just listen to your own intuition. And with that, you have to determine what's enough for you and what's enough for your kids. So often we think that we have to do more and do more and do more just to keep up and say, okay, well, my kids need to be in swim class and gymnastics and soccer, and I need to make sure that they're going to that art class and they need you know, to go to the speech pathologist and they also probably need to go to get their hair cut or whatever it is, there's so much that you're putting on your plate. How are you gonna have any time for you if you're doing so much? Maybe pick one thing a day to do with them and again, this could be, we're going to go on an adventure to find sticks in the backyard. We're going to find the longest sticks and then we're going to color them with chalk. That could be enough. That could be the activity for the day. Or if you know that that sort of stuff is so boring for you, which is okay. Okay, then take them to a museum. Take them to the zoo. Take them to a play date. Walk them around while you call your mom because you need some social interaction. Strap them in that stroller. It is okay, but don't think you have to do for the sake of doing because you are a better mom when you are being, when you allow yourself to be present and play and let go of the expectations. So figure out what you enjoy doing. I know for me, crafting is so boring, so boring for me. I would so much rather go to a nature preserve and get muddy and stare at the trees and like look at the birds and talk about what leaves we found. That's how I'm able to be present with my kids. So find the way that you're able to be present with them because that will fill you up so much more than forcing yourself to do things that aren't right for you. You will feel more fulfilled. You will feel more at peace. You will feel more satisfied and happy if you do the things that fuel you and bring your kids along with you. Okay. Next one, create boundaries. Whoa, okay, mamas, this is a hard one. So many people struggle with boundaries, but the first one is saying no to the things that no longer serve you. So again, kind of going up to the point that I was just talking about, what are the things that fill you up versus the things that you think you should be doing for your kids or the things that you think your kids need to do? No, if it's not a full body, yes, it's a no. And that means for your children as well set those boundaries say no more often stop over committing also i'm not going to say ask for help you need to expect help you are not a single parent unless you are but if you are not a single parent then you shouldn't be acting like one you need to expect help you do not need to apologize for having your needs being met through someone helping out with the chores or putting the kids to bed or helping out with meal planning. No, 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 no. You need to expect the help. So often, many women have fallen into relationships that match their self-esteem. And I really want you to think about that, is that we get into partnerships at the level of our self-esteem. And so at some point in your life, when you first met your partner, and you had pretty low self-esteem, you probably expected very little of them. And so how has that exacerbated as you've had kids, as you've developed a family? Do you continue to just not expect a lot because you yourself feel unworthy, unlovable, not enough? Raise your expectations because you deserve more. Okay, lastly, with this creating boundaries, you need to claim your moments. Do not wait for someone else to give you permission to take care of yourself. You need to claim it. Okay, I got 20 minutes here. Kids are both napping. Do I do the dishes? No, the dishes can wait. Sit down, read a book, put your feet up. Go take a shower. Make yourself a coffee and eat a donut. Order takeout because it's easier. Wait to vacuum until tomorrow. Go on a walk. 
make someone else do bedtime routine, sleep in, make someone else make breakfast in the morning. Hire yourself a babysitter, a cheap summer help, so you can go to a yoga class, or you can just go get a massage, or maybe you can just go to Starbucks or somewhere else, take a walk, go sit in your car. Claim your moments, no one will ever give them to you. No one will ever say, hey, Carrie, you seem really run down. You seem really stressed out and tired. How about this? I'm just gonna take the kids for about an hour. You go do you. It doesn't work that way. You need to claim, claim those moments. That means standing up for yourself. That means having confidence. That means advocating for yourself and being, feeling like you deserve that time for yourself. So again, this goes back up to offering yourself permission. Stop comparing, creating boundaries. And lastly, remember your resilience. Remember when you were nine months pregnant and you thought you could not sleep another moment because everything hurt. Remember when your nipples were cracking. Remember when you were in the newborn stage and if you're in it now, like just know that it will pass. Remember your hardest moments and remember that you still made them through. Remember that this is all temporary and someday, because I think about this a lot, someday I will be able to take a 90 minute walk without interruption, hopefully. I will be able to sleep in till 7.30 in the morning because my kids also will want to sleep in. I'll be able to have my evenings without fighting bedtime. Someday I won't need a sitter every time I want to do something. But until then, I accept this chapter. I see it as temporary. I don't resist it because that just causes more suffering. I recognize that things are hard and it can be painful and I accept it. And I know I'm resilient because I have done hard things and I will continue to do hard things. So please message, comment, anything else that you might need. But resetting is so much more about mindset and belief in ourselves than going to Starbucks. Now, it could be that, but find those little moments. All right, mamas, have a good day.